questions. So to our final participant, um, we haven't had a chance to talk in detail, but he is um, from Nigeria, Charles Amakanam, is, how do you say it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Chairman of the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company. And what's very interesting here is the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, as I understand it, actually invests in your company. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm here at a very, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm here at the very last minute, uh, Madam Chair Lady, um, on the invitation or the request of a friend of mine who's on the board of the NMRC, who is Uche Oji, who is the, uh, who is the CEO of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, which was set up in 2011. Uche is in London and at the last moment he said to me, you know, since we're working together on the, um, the NMRC, uh, wouldn't you kindly come and say a few words? So uh, with some arm twisting and a promise of a good glass of Cabernet Sauvignon, <laughs> I, was, um, I was persuaded to, to do that. And I hope I can uh, uh, substantially uh, make a few points and contribute to this, uh, Madam Chair and uh, colleagues here. I would start off by saying that Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Investment, um, Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority was set up in 2011, on the, and it's led by Uche Oji. Uh, it subscribes to the Santiago rules. It has won a number of awards. In my view, it's too small relative to the size of the economy, far too small. If you look at the metric population size or GDP size relative to the size of the fund, it's too small. But it, it is going to grow, um, and um, Uche has been instrumental in pushing it. Now, some, some few points, some few, from few points in the interest of time, uh, it subscribes to high governance. The, it, has, it has a lot of applications for funds in Nigeria and in West Africa, but it's limited not only by its size, but by the credit quality of some of the projects that um, have been brought to it. Um, and I think this is a universal challenge. It's one of the reasons I like the point made by Mamadou um, about financial engineering. And your point, uh, Madam Chair, uh, with regards to um, uh, where we need to go to from simply having funds, having the demand for those funds, and then finding a way in which we can actually um, innovate and create um, ways in which we can expand the utilization rate of the funds. I think that's our challenge. We know, for example, that, as you rightly pointed out, that there are going to be restrictions on senior debt and the utilization of senior debt uh, uh, by banks, which means that we need to somehow deepen the um, financial system and develop the instruments. From the, from, for example, from the mortgage side, we have analogies which give us some indication of where we can go from towards the infrastructure side. For example, the whole convertible debt obligation structuring there where you have tranches of uh, different types of debt all the way from senior debt down to, to um, um, uh, junk debt. And uh, you, you wonder whether or not with the right re regulatory framework, you can um, structure projects in such a way and parcel them, infrastructure projects, in more or less the same way. But that's very dependent on the regulatory framework being robust. It's dependent on uh, the transparency of the instruments. It's dependent, frankly, on um, uh, the quality of the governments, or the quality of governance that supervises the financial system itself. And if there's no credibility there, which is still one of the challenges that we face in the development of these instruments, and it'll be very difficult to get the international investment that you require to, to, to match anything that a sovereign wealth fund wants to do. So, um, Madam Chair, I have a few other comments, but I just thought that with that, my slant is towards how do we innovate um, and how do we go beyond where we are right now given the limited amount of funds that we have relative to the demand that is obviously there and how do we structure uh, and present and package the, the, the actual um, projects in such a way that they're attractive to not just the sovereign wealth funds, but to the broader investment community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charles, I thank you. I mean, one thought that comes to mind as you all speak is 
Bankability requires an understanding of investor criteria. And I would submit as a hypothesis that all of you sitting at this table, whether you're pension fund, sovereign wealth fund, have investment criteria that is totally consistent with the private sector. So, Amadou, when you talk about a leverage of one to 10, wow, wouldn't that be cool? So, you know, we've talked yesterday a lot about how to work together, partnership, and I wonder if one initiative isn't simply, and um, Uchi, for example, sent me his investor criteria, okay? Why can't we just have transparently everyone's investor criteria and use that as a basis to build momentum to partner together and you know actually you know we're this is all about also learning from one another refining and then related to that what you were saying the financial engineering to really think about how do we work with the other players whether it be the banks and to leverage um doing business in africa you can't afford to be without africa investor